name is Sonia Alonso Sanz de Oger, and I am a professor of uh, political science at Georgetown University in Qatar. What we do in this program is we try to uh, study, get closer to the analysis and the understanding of conflict, violent conflict in different countries. Here we have interviewed people from different political parties, victims associations, concrete victims as well. Uh, we have uh, also interviewed, or we have been attending workshops by academics here in the University of Deusto. We've had a lot, of, we have visited museums. Um, hello, my name is Kushbu Shah and I'm a first year student studying at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service in Qatar. So I went to a British high school and I studied in that textbook briefly about the Spanish Civil War in like the road to World War II. And so within that context, the um, bombing of Guernica was mentioned. Okay, so I'm Syrian American. Um, basically, I grew up in Qatar, going to an American school. So my history, my history education is from the American curriculum. So I'm Kashmiri Pakistani. Um, so my family is originally from the disputed territory of Kashmir. So violence is not something that is unknown to us. And, uh, but I live in uh, Pakistan. So uh, as someone who went to a British school, um, history was very different, I would say, compared to what you would say the normal Pakistani experience would presumably be. I feel like the way I was taught just reaffirms what the workshop was um, articulating. And so it's just confirming this idea, which is really important. My curriculum or the way things were taught, they, they move from conflict to violence so seamlessly as if there's, there's no other alternative if there is conflict, it will be violent. If there is a disagreement, it will be violent. Uh, one of the projects that I did when I was a kid was try to distinguish between Indian textbooks and Pakistani textbooks. And that was very interesting to me because all of these events are presented in two very, very distinct ways. I remember studying American history and I, I, I remember those sections in my textbooks where it's talking about the, um, I don't know if you could define it as the exodus of Native Americans from their, um, from their specific areas all over the United States of America. And it really is the briefest sidebar or, you know the sections of history textbooks where, it's, where it says something like, get to know more or if you're interested in more, that a lot of people skip and it, it talks about starvation and disease and you know freezing to death and it's, it's really problematic. Nothing was mentioned about the Basque country and the Basque conflict. Nothing was mentioned about the victims, how many people. In fact, like the only way Guernica was mentioned was as like just a test subject, a test place, um, completely out of context of what it is and out of the context of like the victims there, their unique identity, why Franco wanted them to be a test place. It wasn't just a random city, that small city like in and it was interesting to see that in the museum in Garnica, that narrative wasn't left out like the textbook was. It was emphasized that these people were Basque. It was, um, they lived there. Germany gained something from the bombings. It was a, like a test run prior to World War II. There were different narratives presented. Uh, it, could, it was a bombing, it was a fire, but that was literally it. There was no mention of the Basque conflict. Uh, there was barely any mention of Spain to begin with, let alone the Basque conflict. So I thought it was very similar to real life experiences that I've had 
So I thought that was really interesting and it felt really um, real and surreal at the same time, which was again very powerful and you see this narrative of actually really recognizing the suffering of the victims, the emotions they may have perhaps felt, which I think is very, very important. How you were saying how it started off with just talking about peace, the different types of peace, inner peace, um, peace on a day to day and how that leads to peace in the long run. And it, it really did set the stage because it was articulating the idea, okay, this isn't a historical museum, this is a peace museum talking about conflict, not even just in Guernica, but in the wider sphere. Uh, the museum, I would say, was a very, very surreal experience for me because uh, I kept comparing it to the Kashmiri issue back home. When we were in her room, a part of me felt as though I felt really sad because I thought as close as we can get to feeling what she felt or feeling what any of the victims felt, we'll, we'll never really understand it. Um, but what's so amazing about the simulation is that it starts a conversation, which is really important. And, you know, after on the bus, even before the bus ride, like all of the students, we left just talking about it, talking about Gebnika, talking about the historical implications, talking about how this is going to our, affect our consciousness. And I think that's what's really powerful about it. Also about the benefits of this supposed um, that, you know, the gains people get from violence or from this entire conflict. I thought that was really highlighted in the museum to quite an extent, especially when you look at the map and you see that certain parts of Guernica were not bombed. Or you see in the map where, you know, you have uh, uh, these other like powers that are invested in like Spain or Germany or Italy and what they gained supposedly from the bombings because that is not something that is genuinely really recognized that you know there were other people very invested into the situation. And I really enjoyed and I said this on the bus I really enjoyed the fact that first you were taught about peace then you were kind of forced to relive what the bombs felt like we can never relive it and we can never the, go through something like that. I hope none of us go through something like that, but it's, it gives you a taste of what it was like, which is very important. Um, and after that fact, that's when you started to learn the historical context, which I think was really powerful because I think that it shows that regardless of the historical context, societal context, um, a victim is a victim, and that form of suffering is going to be across all, all, all types of different conflicts, and you can't really use history to justify violence or suffering and I thought that was really powerful. I feel that um, by allowing that room to be there and by creating a very theatrical narrative and by letting like us sit in that room and hear the voice of the woman narrating an experience and actually listening to the sounds of the bombs dropping was extremely important and it was so valuable for me as a person. But I would have wished to see a more holistic narrative rather than just focusing on this specific incident, but not linking it to the past and to the present as well, because we don't really know what happened afterwards in the museum. And I do believe that it is not always that perspectives are presented to you with the intention of distorting the truth. I sometimes feel that perspectives are presented because of the fact that this is the whole truth of the person who's presenting it. But then if you feel that there is a half truth to it, that the story is incomplete, then I feel like we should act and we should definitely ask questions. If I hadn't have had this workshop or if I hadn't have really reflected, I would have just been another product churned out of the factory line of, you know, um, historical memory. I probably have the same historical memory as the majority of the United States, which is very problematic.